high. Have you heard about emotional hygiene and emotional first aid? Since our childhood, we have heard many times that we need to wash our hands before we eat, brush our teeth before we go to bed, or put a plaster over a cut so it doesn't become infected. Practicing good hygiene is something that many of us are encouraged to do from our young age. But when it comes to our emotional and psychological health, it is something that we often overlook and neglect. Many times we have heard, put a bandage on a cut or take antibiotics to treat an infection, right? People who are emotionally healthy are in control of their thoughts, feelings and behaviors. They are able to cope with life's challenges. They can keep problems in perspective and bounce back from setbacks and that too easily. They feel good about themselves and have good relationships. Relationship with co-workers, family members, their friends, so they have healthy relationships. Emotional hygiene refers to being mindful of our psychological health and adopting brief daily habits to monitor and address psychological wounds which we often sustain. Psychological injury happens from mental trauma caused by failure, rejection, and especially chronic loneliness. People, many people are chronically lonely because of different reasons. There may be many factors behind that. Just as we sustain physical injuries, we also experience injuries on an emotional level. These can be small wounds that heal without much attention. So sometimes we ignore them, we don't notice them. For example, the fleeting feeling of rejection when a friend cancels or passing annoyance when a stranger is rude to us. These are emotional equivalent to small bruises or cuts, real but often relatively minor in the grand scheme of our lives. At other times, though these injuries are much more significant, but if left ignored, they can have a detrimental effect on our complete well-being, whether our physical well-being, emotional well-being, mental well-being. For example, the rejection we feel when our relationship ends, or the deep hurt we experience when we feel unloved as a child. Their emotional equivalent can be likened to a deep-rooted infection or a broken bone, definitely real and in need of some attention if we want to be emotionally and mentally healthy. Emotional injuries can be just as crippling as physical ones. Be mindful of that. We need to learn how to practice emotional health first or having emotional first aid, I may say. To do so, you need to pay attention to emotional pain. Sometimes we are unable to recognize emotional pain even. Recognize your emotional pain when it happens and work to treat it before it feels all encompassing. Human body knows the sensation of physical pain well because we are evolved like that. We are able to recognize the emotional pain and it alerts us that something is wrong and we need to address it. That is what pain is meant for. It is an, a kind of alert. And the same is true for the emotional pain. If a rejection, a failure or a bad mood is not getting better, it means you have sustained a psychological wound and you need to treat it. For instance, loneliness can be devastatingly damaging to your psychological and physical health. So when you or your friend or any loved one is feeling socially or emotionally isolated, you just need to take action. Don't ignore that. Then 
redirect your gut reaction when you fail. It happens when we fail. Our gut reaction is what? We start feeling helpless. We start feeling like we are weak. We start feeling disgusted with ourselves. So failures can often drive us to focus on what you can't do instead of focusing on what you can. This can make you less likely to perform at your best, which will make you even more focused on your shortcomings. And on goes that cycle. Learn to ignore the post-failure reaction of feeling helpless and demoralized, and then make a list of factors that you can control when you when you want to try again. For instance, think about the preparation and planning and how you might improve each of them. This kind of exercise will reduce the feeling of helplessness and improve your chances of future successes. Then monitor and protect your self-esteem. Self-esteem is very precious. It is very valuable. When you feel like putting yourself down, take a moment to be compassionate to yourself Self-esteem is like an emotional immune system and it buffers from emotional pain. It strengthens your emotional resilience. So it is important to monitor it. So keep on monitoring your self-esteem, whether it is plummeting or rising, just monitor it. Avoid putting yourself down, particularly when you are already hurting. One way to heal damaged self-esteem is to practice self-compassion. Thoughts like, I'm so stupid, or I just can't do anything right. All this drags down your self-esteem and makes it more difficult to be emotionally resilient. So what you can do is to write or text yourself supportive things and to help build your self-compassion. As you keep on writing texts to your friends or loving ones, just write a text to yourself. When negative thoughts are taking over, disrupt them with positive distraction. When you replay distressing events in your mind without seeking new insight or trying to solve a problem, you are just brooding, doing nothing else. You are just brooding. And that, especially when it becomes habitual. This can lead to deeper psychological pain. Disrupt unhealthy rumination to distract yourself by engaging in a task that requires concentration. Try doing that. For example, play Sudoku or complete a password or do some quizzes, or try to recall your friends in fifth grade. Even two minutes of distraction will reduce the urge to focus on the negative thoughts or the disempowering thoughts, which are already unhealthy. All these can help you a lot. If you think you have lost much, try find meaning in the loss. Loss is a part of life but it can scar us and keep us from moving forward. If sufficient time has passed and you are still struggling to move forward after a loss, you need to introduce a new way of thinking about it. I know it might be hard. It might be difficult. You won't be able to do it, but think of what you might have gained from the loss. Consider how you might gain or help others gain new appreciation for life or imagine the changes that you could make others happy or you could make your life fulfilling which is more aligned with your values and purpose so all these can be psychologically healing don't let the guilt linger guilt can be useful sometimes but in small doses it alerts you to take action to mend a problem in your relationship or with it alerts you to take action to mend a problem in your relationship in another another person 
but excessive guilt is toxic in that it wastes your emotional and intellectual energies distracts you from other tasks and prevents you from enjoying life so try to remove that guilt and one of the best ways is to offer an effective apology if you want to remove the guilt of offer an effective apology by effective apology is uh, i mean that it is not a surface level it should not be a surface level apology or in words otherwise the most standard apologies they lack empathy statement but introduce an empathy statement in that in other words your apology should focus less on explaining why you did what you did and more on how your actions or inaction impacted the other person so it would include em- empathy so try healing yourself heal your psychological wounds and that is very important for your mental health learn what treatments for emotional wounds work for you so try to analyze what works for you what what helps you to emotionally uh, what helps you to heal yourself emotionally pay attention to yourself and learn how you personally deal with common emotional problems or if wounds and i am sure you will definitely get healed <laughs>